the Philippines. Perlas ng Silangan, Bayang Pinili ng Diyos. In a region dominated by Islam, Buddhism, and Hinduism, the world's leading prophetic voices have called us a nation of destiny. God placed the Philippines in a unique situation. This nation sits in the South China Sea and it's close to Japan, close to Korea, close to China, close to Indonesia. And this is the only Christian nation in all of Southeast Asia. And it is my firm belief that God wants the Philippines to be a blessing to Asia and to be a blessing to the nations of the earth. Philippines comes from two Greek words that mean love of horses. Now, when you talk about love of horses, especially for a nation, and you're talking of a nation that is supposed to have galloping progress. God has invested great wealth in the Philippines within the Mindanao Deep, the biggest deposit of concentrated hydrogen beneath the South China Sea. 213 billion barrels of oil. We're the fifth most mineralized nation in the world. The Philippines has the second largest deposit of gold in the world. Okay, Number one producer of gold in Asia, number two in the world. And copper is, we're the third largest deposit of copper in the world. We're the fourth largest deposit of nickel in the world. Uh, it's found in Surigao. Stainless steel is the main use. For, for nickel. But manganese, we are the fifth largest deposit of manganese in the world. We have the sixth largest deposit of chromite in the world. You know, we have bauxite in Samar, the uh, source of aluminum. But its greatest wealth are its people, a people gifted with a joyful spirit and a heart for God, a civilized race with organized government, written laws, skills in the arts and sciences, especially in seafaring, even before the colonizers came. A people known to be honest, honorable, hardworking, and creative. Most of all, we are chosen by Christ to take his gospel to the nations. Why has Satan fought this great nation so much? Well, he's afraid. He's afraid. The Philippines is a first fruit nation. And so the battle is not only for the nation itself, but for the nations, what will go out of the Philippines? He wants to use the Philippines both as an apostle and an evangelist. And that means it's supposed to be establishing quite a number of things for other nations, and it's supposed to be reaching out to other nations and help them to find God. Now that you know that God has a plan for you, stop looking down yourself. March 2010 marks an end in the beginning. 70 times 7 years have passed. 490 years since the cross was planted in our shores. The season of travail comes to a close. The Jubilee begins. Seventy sevens are decreed for your people and your holy city to finish transgression. Put an end to sin, to atone for wickedness, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. When you look at the Bible, 490 is, you know, in Daniel 924, 490 is like a, a, a jubilee of jubilees. It means, you know, f uh, 70 times 7 or, or 49 times 10, 49 being 7 times 10. Uh, you know, and, and so it's 10 jubilees. And, and, and jubilee season is a time when, when, when God sets free a nation. Uh, jubilees, the concept of the jubilee is found in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 9. I like to read this from the scripture. Then you shall cause the trumpets of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of the atonement, you shall make the trumpet to sound throughout all your land. And you shall consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land. To all its inhabitants, it shall be jubilee for you. Each of you shall return to his possession. Each of you shall return to his family. The time also when the slave is going to be declared debt free. It's actually the 49th year, but it's celebrated on the 50th year. Okay. 
It's the foundation and the cap of kingdom festivals in Israel. It is a directive from God because it means rest and rejuvenation of a nation. This 490 years is a season when, when God will, you know, put an end to a season of, of wickedness. The season of corruption and, and the accompanying results of corruption, which is poverty, which is misery for the poor, it will slowly begin to end and a new season will unfold. When that time comes, a nation will be released. A nation will have redemption. A nation will have renewal, restoration, reconciliation, even revenge of God they're going to experience because God loves a nation. It's going to be a release, recovery, a return. It's a relationship and rejoicing. It's restitution. Because there are about 12 million Filipinos overseas because of our economic problems here, and tawag natin doon, economic diaspora. I believe there will be a great homecoming. Pero tingin ko, ang isang nawala sa Pilipinas yung dangal. What well, man must made uh, for glory and honor. The only way that you can rule is when honor and dignity is there. You cannot rule without dignity and honor. In the day of Jubilee, God will restore that honor. Ibabalik ng Panginoon yung tangal na nawala. The Holy Spirit impressed to me that God changes seasons by changing kings. And God did say that He would transform this nation. He would move this nation forward. This is a time for her to begin to enter into her destiny Him, because this is the time that God can enable us to accomplish in one year what would take 10 years normally. But within five years, God would have brought the nation to a place of shine that people will begin to look at the Philippines and they say, wow, this is what God can do. God is getting ready to move and march through that land. He's going to pull down one and he's going to set up the other. No longer will his words be delayed over the Philippines. If you stand and you pray and you believe, God, the light of Judah, is going to rise and shake his mane over that nation. And he's going to roar out of Zion and the darkness will be dispelled, says the Lord. Every Filipino She'll ask God one more time, why did you bring me on the face of this earth? Because Isaiah 48, 15, down to 17, says, I, even I, have called him, and he will succeed in his mission. So God wants you to succeed in your mission. This is God's word for the Philippines. Can a country be born in a day, or a nation brought forth in a moment? Yet no sooner is Zion in labor, then she gives birth to her children. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. Psalm chapter 102 verse 13.